So today we'll be talking, like I said, just said, we'll be talking about how do I get into UX design, um, trying to answer some of your questions. A few people signed in their questions, actually. Um, I'm hoping that they will join in before I start taking those questions. Okay. So before we begin, I'd like you to have your writing pad and pen. If you don't, please just fetch something. If it's your phone, Google Keep, whatever it is, just get something that you would make some notes on. And also, I've already asked you guys this. If you've not answered, um, you can do so right now. What do you expect to get out of today's chat or this session? And um, I would actually like to also know what you think UX design is. Um, <laughs> So let's see if um, what you actually think of UX design. So I'd like to know what you what you what you know about UX design. I'm in the chat session and I'm waiting for you to. So while I await that, um, I want to talk about a little bit of the history of UX design. Still waiting for your comments. So. so um, UX design is something that has been way before this century. So from this graph or timeline, you'd see 4000 BC. And this was the, this was in um, Chinese. And then you'd see 500 BC, the Greeks. Early 1900s, this person, Frederick, that was all about work workplace um, efficiency. You'd see 1940s, Toyota. Uh, we'll still break this down a little bit, just a little bit, to give you a backstory of UX design and to show you the relevance right from time up on today. Um, the other thing is Henry Dressfuss was about the art of designing for people. It was more about the people than Walt um, Disney. Some people say he was the first UX designer. Okay, that's still a question. Then 1970s, you see Xerox, Apple, PC, um, the old era of all these computers. And then um, Donald Norman was actually who gave UX design the name that we know it as today. Okay, so. Many people, if you're familiar with UX design, if you've heard anything about UX design, you might have heard of this person's name. That's Donald Norman, because he's, he's sometimes called the, the father or the grandfather of UX design. And um, personally, I don't think that's very accurate because you can see from this timeline that UX design has been way before him, but he is actually the one that gave it the name UX design. Okay. Now, a little breakdown is the fact that in 400 BC, they were all about arranging your surrounding in the most optimal, harmonious, or user-friendly way. And that was um, the Chinese. That was that time. Then somewhere along the line, 500 BC, people were interested in how human beings interact with other elements of the system. So like all those uh, machines with a lot of buttons, at that point in time, they were thinking of how do we make this thing friendly enough for the users so that they don't make mistake pressing wrong buttons and all that. That's what they were about then. Then somewhere along the line in 1900s, you'd see optimizing relations between workers and their tools. That was actually feeding also from um, this one, which is the 500 BC zone. Then you see 1940s where they realized that human's input was very, very important and um, they started paying attention to users. As a matter of fact, during that time, they would actually stop a whole uh, machine line if one person thought stuff was not going well. Like, they can literally stop the whole um, <laughs> production line. So, okay, 1955, you see that Henry was renowned for um, designing and improving the usability of customer consumer products, such as vacuum cleaners. So, he was the one that was all about usability and usability, it's been much more usable for users. Then 1966, you see Walt Disney, and that's the father of Disney, Disney and everything Disney. So it was more about joy, like let's stop delight people. It was more about the delight of um, pe users while they are 
making use of stuff and why they are watching stuff. So it basically puts in themselves as the producers in the shoes of their guests. Okay, 1970, there you see the development of graphical user interface, mouse and all that. See, you see now this is now like in the 70s, coming down to 1995, which was when Donald literally just called it user experience. All along the line, people are just known they were doing stuff so that it would make things easier for the users. But um, down here, they don't realize that, okay, let's call it something. Then Donald um, Norman called it user experience. Okay. Okay, so um, Treasure says, personally, I feel UX design is a continuous process of designing specifically for the needs of the users okay okay so basically i think um, treasure is saying it's putting yourself in the shoes of the users to be able to create something they actually need or something that we actually they will actually enjoy using okay so now why did we have to why did we have to look back or try to even understand what's up about the history and all that it's because now as now is actually the best time to to be a ux designer because it's so relevant you can see that it's relevant to every field every experience is it about using consumer products or like using your phone or even a cup of a cup there's user experience in that or literally anything you do even your experience of going into a bank and being responded to or all these things are actually user experience design so you see that today user experience actually drives the whole economy you'd see what makes the difference between companies some certain kind of companies and some other type of companies is just user experience the fact that they pay attention to their users experience while making use of their products or their services so why you would um say for me personally now let me give you a personal example why i would say i prefer uber to op or why I preferred Uber to OPE was just some little things about customer service or some little things about those little experiences that made the difference. It's also why um, some people prefer some certain banks to some other certain banks or why you'd prefer some certain apps to some, some other apps. Why maybe someone would prefer Instagram to Facebook or LinkedIn to something else. So, all these things are experiences and you you'd see from the issue we just looked at that now is actually the best time to even be talking ux design because everybody is now businesses entrepreneurs are now realizing that what will set them apart from other businesses or other entrepreneurs is them catering to the experience of their users okay now um some people have asked like what are the things I need to know? What are the things I need to have for me to be a UX designer? And um, I've tried, I've actually distilled it into the littlest things, the smallest things. And I wrote it this way because it's actually not very important for you to know some certain things. It's not, it's not like you have to be a developer, you have to understand one theory or something. The major things you need to have are separated into soft skills and actual like materials you should have. Soft skills, empathy, optimism, and creative confidence. So if you're empathetic, um, so you see that it's called empathy, not sympathy. If you are someone that you can bring yourself out of yourself and try to understand the perspective someone else is um, experiencing, what your user is actually feeling like, what how they are going through the use of your solution or your application or even your service then that is then that means you'd probably be a great ux designer because that's the number one soft skill number one skill you should actually have not just soft actually number one skill you should have a party then you should be optimistic because there are times where you would go out and you're um talking to users as a researcher and then you'd realize that stuff is not going along the way um, going the way you should go or maybe you have done you've gone through some phases of user experience and then you now see that oh you made a mistake at one point in time you should be able to you should be able to again bring yourself out of yourself <laughs> and then go back to where you might have made a misstep and then 
go on. So creating confidence is just you, well, it's actually English. So just basically the fact that you should be able to be confident of your creative ability and the fact that you can actually meet your users' um, needs. Some of these things are not, you see, I didn't call them pre-requirements. They're not stuff you necessarily should have before you come into the field, but there are stuff that you should, you know that you would, you must develop or you would have to grow in time when you um, join, when you when you become a UX designer. So now, well, the other thing you just need is your laptop and your internet or your desktop or whatever it is. So you actually don't need very much to come into the UX design world. Okay. Um, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to just drop it and I would answer them once I'm done. Um, so here we're talking about the different parts path of a software um, of a ux designer so you have product designer and this is more of a generalist role so many people that like, you'll have heard this old i'm a product designer i'm a product designer and it's generalist because here you are going to be doing you, you are going to be someone that is doing more of the top to down approach which is the whole breaking out requirements research talking to the users talking to the business um, going ahead to do like basically all the phases of the whole UX process. That's a product design something that is involved with all of them. Basically, um, it's almost the same thing as being a UX designer. The only difference is that product design is not limited. It's not limited to just the um, experience of the users while using that solution or that app. Product design is also involved with the marketing what's the marketing language, um, sales, and all those kind of things. So that's product design. So UX design as well is generalist or interaction design. It's, it's actually, there are actually generalist roles as well. That is, you are not a specialist. You, are not, you don't specialize. You are involved with all the phases. Okay. Now UI design is more of a specialist role. So You'd see some people's roles, maybe if you're familiar with some, some designers, you see them say UI slash UX designer. So because there's a difference between UI and UX. UX design is the model. UI design is a subset. Like um, I think Femi said earlier, is a brand visual designer. That is under UX design. That's a subset, or ideally should be a subset of um, UX design. So this is a specialist role that has to do with wireframing or sketching from sketching, wireframing, then actually coming up with low fidelity prototypes and then high fidelity prototypes. So that's fidelity meaning um, actual or real, the more real it is. So low fidelity meaning like this one that's actually showing you is a low fidelity, then high fidelity is like what will look like the, the closest, the closest um, way that that app is going to look like before it's coded okay then we have the brand and the visual designer so like Femi said so this is a specialist role and these are the people that are involved with um, communicating the brand communicating a brand in visual form or communicating it in such a way that it is um, that the, the customer actually understand they get they, they get your vision basically without you actually using the words to say it. So this is through um, logo, um, even the type of fonts you use, the communication language. So this is specifically, this, this is a specialist role and it's majorly about um, the brand. Okay. Then we have who we call a motion designer or prototyper. So this is this is um, someone, this as well is a specialist role, and he's someone that does with motion. So you see all those sites, all those apps you go to, um, and when you want to refresh, you pull it, like you pull the screen down to refresh it. That's, that's actually um, some form of interaction. And then you see all those um, animations, people actually design this, and those are people that we call motion designers. Then prototyper is the one that has to do with um, how, how the application goes from goes from one um, one particular screen to the next screen. So, okay. Now, um, career migration into UX design. Here, 
the reason why this is here is because it's important for you to understand that you can actually migrate from any field to UX design. Like I said, there's actually no real, there's no, there's no specific requirements when it comes to um, UX design. So you can be a graphic designer, a software developer, a psychologist, or an architect, or a marketer, or account officer, or like anything, and then you come into UX design. So that's the idea here. Okay, so um, paths or path in UX design, that's literally what we went, uh, um, we, did, we did already. So this is actually a misplaced slide. I apologize for this. <laughs> okay, then we have UX researcher, which is the last I have on this list. And this is someone that does, that goes out into the field or behind a computer using tools to understand what the users need or what they want. This person takes notes, this person um, uses tools to find out like, what we want to do, what the business goals, does it actually align with what the users actually need? So that's a UX researcher or um, a user researcher. Yeah. Now, how do you switch or how do you switch careers into UX design? Well, for one, you can either attend a, a training bootcamp or like such as the one we're going to be having in September, starting in September, that's next month or you could um, self-study. There are a lot of materials actually online, but if you'd like like a structured, um, a structured session or structured group of sessions to be able to understand these things, then we're having one next month. So the second thing is you can, within your company, you can actually switch within your company. So if you're in a company and you're a developer or you're um, a brand visual designer or something, you can actually switch. You can understudy your company and see the gaps where you as a UX designer can actually fit in and then you make um, recommendations or you talk to your superior whatever it is and try to make them understand the, the great things about the knowledge you have as a UX designer. Actually, this was something I did in my very first role after learning UX design. I switched within my current company. Next thing you can do is to pitch your past, past experience using your soft skills. So like understanding um, empathy again is something that's very important because if you understand the business needs or the business goals, then you'd be able to communicate effectively using basically being putting yourself in the shoes of even the orgas, and then you'll be able to pitch your experience to them. So that's basically what this is about. Then you can also design for a local startup or start a side, side project. So doing this will help you to start building what they call portfolio because um, you can almost not get like the kind of jobs you want. You can't actually get jobs like that as a UX designer without a portfolio or something that tells a story. Okay. Um, then lastly, well, just make the switch. <laughs> yeah, just make the switch. So now how long does switching into UX design actually take you? Well, it depends on you. It depends on how much dedication you put into it and it also depends on what approach you take so if you're going to do your self-study um you would probably you might actually spend longer and then you might develop what they call uh, the imposter syndrome which is what makes you feel like i feel like i don't know something that i should know i actually experienced that for a long time um because i i did a self-study approach i self-studied myself into knowing ux design it took me a very long time so it depends on what approach you decide to take. If you decide to take the approach of going through a, um, a structured um, session, like the one we'll be having next month, then it will probably take you less. Then it also depends on the hard work and the commitment you're willing to put into it. Are you willing to actually give the time to working on things? Are you willing to do some sketches, pick up a particular problem you notice around you or a business around you, do something, create a solution for them and add that to your portfolio? Are you willing to do that? If yes, then well, it will take you less. If not, well, it will take you to be longer. So yeah, it depends on you. It might take you longer, it may take you less. So that's, that's more dependent on your um on your approach to learning okay so how can you get started now this is actually the end of my presentation this is actually supposed to be a very short presentation more um to answer your questions how can you get started well um like i just said there are options for you to take you can decide to um go through a structured training or you can decide to self-study or if you already have some of this knowledge, then you can go straight into um, 
the session, the section of the program that like, like what we have next month, which is for mentorship. Like, okay, how do I actually get into the um, space? How do I get a job? How do I actually pitch myself to get that particular job I want? Or how do I build my portfolio? How like basically um, mentoring. So you get a mentor. Getting a mentor is very important in um, building a career. Okay, so I got this from Peter, and I'm, I don't know, I don't think Peter is actually here, but he sent an email about this question, and his question was, um, okay, so, well, let me just read what he said. Hi, Grace, thanks again for the opportunity of your guided mentorship. It's indeed, indeed much appreciated. Okay, so my question goes thus. I have a background in psychology and I seek a direct relevance in the technology space, hence my decision to explore UX design. Could you help explain if there is any the relationship that may exist between psychology and concepts such as user research, profiling, etc. Okay, so um, it's basically saying that he has a background in psychology and he wants to know how, and because he wants to get into the technology space, he wants, so he thinks that UX design will be great for him. So he want, he's trying to ask if there's any relationship between psychology and all these other concepts such as UX research and so on. So yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. There's a direct relationship, direct, like, direct line between psychology and um, user experience design, specifically, the user research part. I'm really grateful because I'm looking to get into the UX design space. It's also broad. I really don't know how to begin. Um, okay, I signed up for the mentorship class already. It's It's been giving me a sleepless night lately, not knowing exactly where to begin. I'd appreciate your help so much. Okay, so, well, what I would say is there's no need of feeling stressed out about coming to UX design. Even though I would not describe UX design field as a um, over simple, very simple field or something to get into. No, I wouldn't say that. What I would say is that UX design, this field is all about being in the shoes of the people you're trying to create solutions for and then creating the, the right solution for them. It's also about after you've created that solution, testing it from um, testing it with the users and then hearing their feedback. That is really what UX design is. So it's not something that you need to be stressed out about. You need to um, be fidgety about. Um, just like I showed in the slide I um, that I was presenting earlier on, what you just need to do are very 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 simple steps, and you just need to choose either you whether you would. Um, um, self-study, there are actually a lot of wonderful resources out there, or whether you attend a training bootcamp or a mentorship session, such as the one we are having um, next month. So if you'd want to do, depending on what you want, you can easily just choose what you want and then try to follow through. Then you need to also be able to, you need to be a, a solution-oriented person that can easily um, spot problems like what I mean by that is you need to be able to have a quick eye to be able to see where problems like problems exist either in your company or around you is a local startup around a restaurant or for instance yeah for me there's one particular problem I, I discover anytime I go to a restaurant or a public um, a public service such as that and the problem is I I usually get received or responded to um, by some certain people by like saying like whoever it is that responds to me. And then sometimes the service is so good that I want to actually leave a great feedback. Sometimes the service is so bad that I also want to leave a feedback, but the feedback system is not really favorable. So that for me is me spotting a problem and then somewhere in the back of my head, I'm like, okay, so there got to be a solution for this. And then um, what a UX designer would do is to first say, okay, this is what I've discovered is a problem, or this is what this business has discovered is a problem, then we need to 
find out similar people, people that actually think that it's also a problem. So which is where user research comes in. So the next thing would then be to, okay, we've done our user research, we've interviewed 100 people, or we've surveyed 1,000 people, or whatever number of people, and then we've seen that, okay, these are the similarities between what they said, these are possible, these are, these are possible problems that we can tackle. So maybe what we thought was the problem is not really the problem. So that is really the second phase. So I'm literally just running through the whole UX phase. Then the third thing would be after we've, um, after we've, all, uh, we've done that, then we can say, okay, what are possible solutions to this problem? So possible solutions, we note them down, okay. And then you have to test to see if the solutions are actually things that will actually solve the problem. For instance, um, let me use Facebook as an example. So when Facebook started, it was a simple problem that Mark was trying to solve. And then after speaking to one or two people, we found out, oh, wow, okay. So this problem is actually not exactly what he thought. Then he started something and then it led to other stuff down the line. So user research is important. And then there are other things that follow down the line before you now come to the part that most people think UX designers are, which is like the people that actually make stuff pretty. Before you come to that phase, there is even still the sketching, um, there's wire framing, there's stuff that actually, um, that actually um, you have to do. So what I'm basically saying is that UX design is not a difficult field. It's, a, um, it's more like a science. It's a structured thing that is a structured set of processes that you just follow to make sure you're building the right solution for your users. Okay. Um, Adema is saying, please tell us about the mentorship program for of next month. Is it paid or free? Okay, so the mentorship program is is called is deliberately titled mentorship program because uh, it's not meant to be the regular teaching you the theories of UX research or blah blah all those kind of things. Yes, there'll be the theory, but it's meant to be more practical in the sense that we'll have a case study that we are trying to. Um, research towards an actual problem we're trying to research towards then we go through all the processes um processes of um that involved in ux um design and then we actually do it so it's more practical than just talk or theoretical and then in addition it's also called mentorship because um you'd you'd be You'll be talking to there'll be some industry experts that'll be there to say maybe one or two that'll be there to tell you some of their experiences and answer some questions and also to help get land a job would help you um go through the some of the processes that are involved like polishing your portfolio working on some projects to giving you feedback realistic feedback the way an interviewer or um, companies actually the, just basically the, what they are trying to, what people are looking for. So that's basically what the mentorship program is about. So is it paid or free? No, it's not free. It's a paid program. And um, we have a few people already that showed interest. What we are looking for is actually a close knitted class. So not a large group of people. So um, it's, it's actually a session that it's going to run on weekends and it's going to be for um, about four, between four and six weeks. So actually six weeks. So it's gonna be for six weeks. Four weeks is actually the more of the practical session and theoretic section. Then the last two weeks would be for the um, like feedback, questions and answers from um, industry experts and all that. Okay, so it's paid for and it's, it's what it's actually costing. It's actually an investment from your part of um, 70k that's 70,000 naira but for the first few people that actually register before the end or like say actually by the um the end of the first week the first week in september for the people that actually register in the first week of september they get to pay 50k so they get 20k like shaved off okay so um it's going to start in the it's actually starting the second weekend of um september so if you got the email of what's coming up i actually sent an email like a few i think a few weeks ago maybe a week or two weeks ago it's listed um these things in it so i probably just send that again to everyone okay um oh another thing i want to say is that we'll be having another one of this session i think next week 
and we'll try not to do it at this time of the day we'll try to be doing this like on saturday and maybe saturday morning so that more people will be able to partake or enjoy okay treasure is sending me a few messages privately so let me just read it it said what kind of case studies should you have in your portfolio to land a job okay so this is a little bit um, um a question that if i'm going to respond it's a little bit detailed but what i would say is that um well more of this we actually discussed in that mentorship program but the kind of case studies you need to have will be stuff that actually tell the story you need to tell a story in your portfolio you need to tell a story from what the problem was and um, like i said like the example i gave of going to a restaurant and like that so what i believe would be the solution was um, a feedback system so but the way i intend to do that feedback system may not be the way other users may enjoy using it or may not even be useful to people what if i want to use it as a mobile app but most people that come to those kind of restaurants don't have smartphones for instance or what if they have smartphones but well they don't like to leave their names what if they like to do anonymous so um telling a story is important when you um you create your case study so as per what kind of case studies there's no specific type of case studies to land a job it depends on the kind of job you want to you want to get for instance if you want to get job in the health industry health that's like people that are sick health yeah so if you want to get um, um a job as a ux designer in the health industry then you should probably be having case studies along the line of health or yeah health or health <laughs> you should actually have such case studies so maybe the situation of um, the hospital management system that we don't really have in this country or maybe insurance health insurance whatsoever it may be so um basically it depends it really just depends on the kind of job you want to get so if you want to get a job in a, in the finance industry that's like say banks or um fintechs so you should probably be working on projects such as maybe alat or all this kind of mobile banking apps so it depends so you don't necessarily need to choose a particular a particular um type of case study you can have a series of these things that will still tell your story now i want to clarify i want to say this and, and to let you know that a ux designer's portfolio is not the same thing as a ui designer's portfolio so ux designer's portfolio again i'm saying tells a story so it it tells the whole journey of um, of how you got the problem to the like okay what was the demography of the people you actually researched so some of these things you'd see some some actual um, case studies some actual portfolios during the um during the mentorship program that we'll be doing next next month and we'll be working on building yours together okay how important okay this is also treasure asking this question how important are visual design skills in getting a job i'm assuming you're saying a ux job so visual design skills are important but again it depends on the kind of job you want to get so um now if you remember what we're going through the slide you saw different different Very roles or different paths that a um ux designer would actually can actually choose so you can choose to be a ux researcher you can choose to be a ux designer you can choose to be a um visual designer yep there are so many things you can be, choose to be an interaction designer you can choose to be whatsoever or you can choose to be um a generalist that understands all so for instance i have a, a colleague that is a ux researcher she does not do any figma design or adobe xd whatsoever it is she does not do any design what she does is ux research and she earns really good money so how important are visual design skills to getting a job so if it's um if it's a job as a ui designer that's user interface designer or if it's a job as a um, brand designer yes it's very important um in short as a matter of fact regardless of what kind of designer you want to become it's good for you to have some of the skills you may not be too in-depth in it but it's good to have some of the skills okay 
Treasure is asking, does the mentorship program help with job hunting? Okay, so let me just answer that question because it's probably something that's in the mind of a lot of people. So we would not be helping you with actually job hunting. That is, we'll not um, be calling for numbers like, okay, um, this, we have someone that needs a job or we'll not be searching for you online, finding jobs because these jobs are literally all over the internet. If you literally, if you type right now, UX design job, you would see a lot of jobs, both online and offline, both physically and all that. You see all these jobs. The problem is usually, um, problem is usually actually getting this job, which is what we'll be helping you to do. So once you apply or once you find that job that you want, then I will be helping you with um, preparing your portfolio to look like what those people um, want um, or it's also be helping you with um, basically the kind of soft skills or the kind of skills, whatever it is that these people um, actually need. So, um, so yes and no, we'll be helping with, um, it's actually be helping with the job hunting, but not, not in the sense of actually hunting it down. <laughs> okay, so I hope that answers your question. So yeah, I got your email already, Femi and um, Sanusi. Okay, great. So thank you very much, guys. Um, you'd receive an email about this, um, about the mentorship program for, for um, next month. But like I said earlier, it's actually filling up a little bit fast. And then you'd um, need to make your payments like the first week of September because there are a number of materials and resources you need to read up on and um, study and you get feedback on before we actually start. So we want you to be prepared in a certain way, especially when it comes to it, some of the theoretical parts before we actually start the mentorship, because we have just four weeks. And I want to make really good use of it. So um, thank you so much, everyone. To, um, look forward to receiving my email <laughs> and try to um, show your interest in the program if you are as quickly as possible. If you want to send WhatsApp messages, this is actually the number to send that to 0708597 So it's WhatsApp only. Oh, okay. I, I wanted to send this to, let me send this to everyone. It's 0708597 WhatsApp only, please do not call. Actually, it won't go through if you try to call. <laughs> Thank you to everyone um, and bye-bye.